Caroline Stanbury. She's been called regal, witty, and ice queen. I'm not here for your amusement, you're here for mine. But she can't deny she brings the fire. <laughs> Did you just straddle my husband? Yeah, like, on the and your husband said he loved you it. What? After three seasons of lording over the ladies of London. We're not her minions, do you know what I mean? No, because like, I got you as my minions first. She's left it all for her new role as a lady of Dubai. Let's see how that's going. This is Caroline Stanberry's Life After Bravo. So when Ladies of London began to air, I imagine there was quite a transition as your life became much more public. Of everything that we saw on the show and things that people would, would say about you on the show. I thought it was mean that you questioned them and that you bullied them. I love babies. I do like them, but you prefer to have I, them and then leave them for a few years and then come back. I don't care enough. All right, Ice Queen. Do you feel like there's anything that people, fans, got wrong about you? If you think I'm an ice queen from the show, then I, you know, that's okay. I, I, I can take criticism. I'm, I really can. I, I take it every day in my normal life. Do you feel like having a sort of persona that you're known for on a show makes you lean into it in your real day-to-day -day life? Well, you see, I think I built that persona before the cameras came because I... You know, I, in gift library, it was, you know, all about sass and fun. And I had the be nice sign behind me. That didn't come for the show. That was there. You guys just found me. So that's the office layer as it looks now. Okay, so how can I scream at you? You can scream through this door. Maybe I, you know, maybe you get a bit more swagger with the cameras. But I was already um, eating, color coordinating my jelly tots. Why are my jelly tots not color coordinated? You ate them. People that know me know that I'm really kind to the people that I love. And I think all these animals would say the same. What was it like watching people react to you? Well, I was really lucky and I was so surprised that so many, I did so well as in people liked me so much because I was like, um, in my real life, I'm like Marmite. People either really like me or really don't. So. Um, I really wasn't expecting it. And I think because it had aired, we'd done it so long ago, by the time it came out, I was sort of like, mm, whatever. You know, I was sort of, when you're filming it, you get really excited. And that's when you see everyone on the street and, you know, people are recognizing you. Afterwards, when you're waiting for it to come out, you don't really think about it. It was only in America, really, when I went to the States that I felt like, oh, I'm on TV. Because in my day-to-day -day life, I filmed, went home, had my kids, and no one... No one, there was no fanfare. No one went, oh God, you, you're amazing. And no one watched the show in England. When I first went on the um, press tours with you guys, everywhere I went or any show or press that I did, everyone would just come up and cuddle me. And I think with the British accent, my girlfriends used to say, or my, you know, they used to say, at this point, you're, you know, everybody loves you so much and the way you speak so much, you could perform a drive-by shooting and everyone would be going, oh, there she goes. It's like, you know, every time I'm, I'm rude to somebody on the show and, and they'd be going, oh, thank you. It's like poor man's Cavalli. Thank you. It's a pleasure. And I'm like, no, it wasn't a compliment. But it's somehow when I say it, it sounds like one. So I got away with murder. Let's talk about one of your current projects, Divorce Not Dead. How did that come about? Obviously, I got divorced. Um, and we're, we're, we're fine. He lives just across the road and he's got the kids tonight. Um, we've been married 18 years. So it was, you know, we're friendly exes and we get on well. He's coming here for Christmas. I think divorce not dead does what it says on the box. We're told on by society that we should have achieved by a certain age or we should do or the right things to do or the way to bring up our children or, you know, once once you are married, that's it for life. I think it's for all women, it's women's empowerment. I think so many women get divorced these days and think life is over and no one's ever gonna want them again. I'm in my forties, what am I gonna do? And it's just saying you're divorced, you're not dead. I mean, for God's sake, women, get on with it. Like life is just starting. Um, and I believe that, you know, life is chapters. It's not, you know, one long novel. It's a series of chapters. And so I think when I started the podcast and it's, it's 
doing really, really well, which I'm so happy with. And and I realized that so many women just needed that um, reassurance, really. I think so many women suffer in silence in their marriages. Um, that's not to say I was suffering. It's just, you know, I just think you are, sometimes you turn yourself into something else or someone else and you just don't know, you can't see how to get out. And that's why I think Divorce Not Dead is just, loads of people have asked me, how do you know when it's over? How do you know? I think people stop themselves or wait till their children are older. And, you know, there's no need to do all that. You can just get get on with it. You know, start your life. By the way, I, as I said, I'm, the, thing, the thing with the podcast and Divorce Not Dead is just telling people that, you know, I was married 18 years. I've got three beautiful children. That's a success story. It is not a failure. And that's what I think the people need to twist things. You know, I had a great marriage. I still have a great friendship. If I need him, I'll call him. The thing is, I have three children. So like it or lump it, I can't get divorced. I can't move solely on. He will always be in my life. So there is just absolutely no point. Now, there will be times where, you know, I, he's in a better stage than I am. I'm in a better space than he is. You know, um, maybe he has a girlfriend and you don't have a boyfriend. And there's going to be hurt and things like this. But you need to just breathe through it because when you get through it, um, if you've got children, you need to come out with a relationship if you have children. And luckily, I have a boyfriend who's incredibly open-minded too. So they haven't met yet, and they will. They've both agreed to. But I do see myself in my future holidaying with my children just because how am I going to take, you know, a holiday with, you know, them, then they've got to go on with him. It doesn't work. We have to holiday together. And I made that decision. And I think it will happen soon. It's only been a year and a half now, or, you know, a bit that we've, we've been divorced. Um, so, but, you know, we're getting to a stage now that I think, you know, as I said, he's agreed, to, they've all agreed to me. It will happen, and my kids are all fine. And once that happens, we'll all start holidaying together and doing all these things. It'll be so much easier. Well, let's talk about your new relationship. Your relationship with Sergio has been a viral topic online. Yes. Tell me about your boyfriend. Oh, he's downstairs. I'm sure he's all listening. Um, He's amazing. He's just so easygoing. He's so young that there's no judging. I mean, every day is so much fun with him. And I mean, we've caused quite a stir. I mean, oh my God, I think we've been in probably eight countries on newspapers. It's made me laugh so much because I'm thinking, you go into a club in any country right now, men have been doing this for years. Why is this so shocking? I'm just leveling the playing field. And if he's comfortable and I'm comfortable, why is this national news? It's hilarious. You know, look, Jem was the perfect father for my children. He was the perfect partner for my life that I needed. I had much more serious life. I think if you saw my house now and the way I am now, I'm much more down to earth. I'm in, you know, I'm very relaxed. I have so much fun. I think that everyone's concern is what I'm going to do with it when I'm 80. But was there a guarantee that Jem was going to be there when I was 80? No. And if I'm happy right now, who cares? And I've got enough friends around me. And if Sergio decides to leave before then, then that's all right too. But, you know, at the moment, he's not going anywhere. And I'm very secure. When I met Sergio, we really became friends first because I wasn't thinking about him for me. Um, and um, we really liked each other as people. And we, we just talked a lot. We really, really got on. So our, ours is really based on friendship. Sergio and I discuss work. We have a laugh. We, you know, we go running together. You know, I don't, I, I don't, I don't care whether um, uh, Sergio's paying something or not. I don't talk about money with him like that. Um, you know, we travel together. We're travel companions. We have so much fun together. Right. We're good. The uh, Himalayas have, I mean, is definitely not what we thought. We are in a cold country. <laughs> we cannot shower. <laughs> we are day two. We have not showered. You know, we're in different phases of our lives. You know, Sergio's at the beginning, starting out, building again. Like, he was a soccer player. He did so well. And now he's, like, going into, you know, business here. And he's having... You know, he's he, he's having the time of his life. You know, and I'm also not 
a jealous, I'm a great girlfriend. I'm not jealous. I say, go out. He's a good looking guy. Go have fun. Go clubbing. Go do whatever you want. You know, but he never goes. He's always here with me. <laughs> He's obsessed. <laughs> yes, in a great way. I love you. Um, <laughs> I love you so much. <laughs> We're quite strong and um, he's just so much fun. And every day, you know, like I, I will get, obviously I have so much responsibility. And the great thing is he has fresh eyes and we just have such, he brings out the child in me, which I have anyway. Um, we just have a real laugh together and he really doesn't, care how old I am. So your experience with boarding school came up fairly often on the show. I went to boarding school. It was just full of rules and regulations. You know, children were to be seen and not heard. I didn't eat fruit. What reason? Probably a mental thing. I went to boarding school. They made us eat fruit for breakfast. You couldn't leave your table till you ate the fruit. And so I used to sit there and gag on my fruit. Ever since then, I've never eaten fruit. It's post-traumatic stress disorder. It stuck with me when you talked about throwing up out of the car window on your way back to school. You loved boarding school. I hated it. You remember how upset I used to get at the end of the weekend? I used to nearly physically throw up. Mum would be like, don't worry, you'll feel absolutely fine. We just need to get you down the driveway. As I've got my head out the window as I'm vomiting down the drive. It sounds like it was pretty traumatic. It is traumatic. It's not an easy thing to do, but um, for any child, I would not do it to my children. I think it's an archaic way. I don't think you should bring up children and then send them out the house and bring them home. I, I mean, I actually chose not to come home at some stage so that I, because it was easier to stay than to go home and then have to re go back. Could you tell us a little bit more about your experiences? I mean, uh, you know, there are some shocking stories, you know, like, you know, um, we used to, we lined up in the morning to go down to breakfast where the whole school would wait while I ate my fruit and I'd sort of like choke on it because I couldn't bear the fruit they'd given me. I, I have one rule, no fruit. Taste it. No, 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 orange. Just taste it. Don't eat fruit. Taste it. I cannot eat fruit. Spit it out. It's like, I will have to spit it out. Taste it. You don't eat fruit? No, of course I don't eat fruit. You know I don't eat fruit. Taste it. You will love it. Taste it. It's good to try new things. Actually, I went to see a therapist once and they said, well, it's like you've been... You know, you went to the army for however many years, lots of six-year-olds crying, and you're told to shut the F up. And, or if you wet your bed when, because you're little, they would make, they would pull you out of bed and make, make it yourself. And there's no one, no one that's really sympathetic. I mean, you get summons to headmasters, officers, you had your, you, they used canes. They, um, you know, humiliate you in front of your classes. It's, it is, it is, that's what boarding school is. How do you think that affected you long term, if at all? I had headgear at boarding school. And um, I, you know, I really, I think I suffered a lot. Um, long term, I think, well, I mean, it took me a long time to be really good friends with my mother. I really did. I think, I don't think I had a relationship with her until I was 20. Um, and, uh, I think that I just internalize everything. So if I have a problem, I don't find a problem shared is a problem halved. I think, you know, I like to go and just deal on my own. I do everything like, you know, like that. And then my, my, and then I probably am not the most, um, well, I'm not cuddly. I'm not very sympathetic and I'm maybe a bit hard to some people. So do you think this infamous ice queen persona came from your experience at boarding school? I think that this, this fabulous came out of that. I think you dream about something else and I think you do build it. And I think I built my own, you know, if I look at my house now, I'm like, oh my God, I'm in my own fairy castle that I, you know, and everything's pink and it really is. I pinch myself. So I, I think that it's something that I've created out of that t period of time. On the show, you led us into so many aspects of your life, which were often difficult. From your business. I'll be fried. Yep. Pretty much. Your family. I made a mistake. I never meant to cause you said sorry. this, this, this um, drama. Oh, Sophie, get a pair of balls. Last night you were going, you were like in tears going, what the f I've been bulldozed by this bitch. Your circle of friends. Don't tell me that I chose money you over my kids. Children. I can't agree well, with that. Well, I can't agree with you. Keep going. We're leaving your kids all the time. Was there ever a criticism 
of you or your family or your life that really hurt? I honestly can't remember. I mean, they're always the same criticism. You're always going to have criticism. But, you know, the hard things, I think, are always I'm the world's worst mother because I work. Um, I'm never home. Um, that kind of stuff, family stuff, which people have no clue. You know what I mean? How much time I spend with my kids or even if, and even if I didn't, by the way, at all, and I just went to work. Well, I mean, that's also my prerogative. So, um, and, and, and if I did it, it's because I, I had to, I have to work. So like when, you know what I mean? Like I don't go around shouting at other mothers at work. You know, again, I really couldn't give a F what they say, to be honest. Um, are they coming to pay my bills? Are they in my shoes? And let me tell you something, girls out there, no matter what, and as you said, I, I know I'm only saying that now because I was married 18 years. There is no guarantee in life of anything, anything. And the biggest mistake any woman can make in today's society or world is not to work. So, you know, those, those, are, those are people sitting behind the TV screen you know, watching TV from home, probably bored out of their minds, you know, and that's really sad because I always say, you know, once you give up work, it's very hard to get back into the work workforce. And I will always ensure no matter how much money, you know, somebody has, I don't care if you're, if you're married to Bill Gates, he can still leave you with nothing, you know, that you have your own power, your own individuality, and you learn to get out there and do your own thing. And my children aren't going to thank me because I turned myself into this pathetic mess at home so that they can, you know, thrive at the beginning. And then as soon as they've left me, then I'm like needy and having to go and live with them because I've got no money and no life left because they were it. There you go. <laughs>